Welcome to Social Jumpstart, the cable television program about social media. I'm Mike Walpert, and our guest this week is Ruhi Mula. She is uh, an expert in the world of social media. She's the founder of socialbiz.now.com and the author of a book on Facebook for business people, learning Facebook in 14 days, and a technologist. So welcome to the show, Rui. I appreciate having you. Thank you for having me. Tell me a little bit about how you come at social media that's okay. different. All right, well, thank you. Um, well, for me, social media today, social media for a lot of people is really about PR and marketing. And my background in, in social media and why I came into social media really started out with the technology world. My, um, my background initially started out as a developer in large-scale web applications. Oh. And I morphed from that into being a small business consultant. And then I wrote the book and held a couple of conferences in the North Bay. But primarily, I believe that social media is really part of a larger picture. And for a lot of people, they don't know that it really encompasses a lot of different things and a lot of different disciplines. So for me, I believe social media really requires the business aspect, it requires a technical base, and it also requires the marketing side as well. So if you have an understanding of all three components, what I call the three legs of social media, mm -hmm. if you have an understanding of all three of those, you have a much better handle on what social media really is. So. Sometimes uh, business owners, the social media is a source of uh, perhaps confusion or pain. They're, they're trying to figure out what to do and, and, uh, and how to do it better. But, not, but what you're saying is, is the focus on your business is paramount and the marketing side is paramount. Then separate leg to the technology and, and, uh, and, and then the social interaction with people. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, one of the biggest challenges for small businesses is that they think social media is, is free, and it certainly is to, a, to an extent. Um, you know, a lot of the tools are free, for example, but if you don't have an understanding that in order to implement social media, you need to apply resources and you need to have a specific strategy, you need to have goals, you need to have a, a roadmap of where you're going to go. If you have an understanding of all those components, if, you don't, if you're not able to really understand your own business and recognize that there are technical issues as well in, in implementing those, those strategies and the tactics that follow, then it's much, much harder to actually really understand social media from a bigger perspective. And really, I think that's a, lot, a large challenge for a lot of small businesses because they look at social media as you know oh it's it's free it, therefore it must be simple um, it can be you know initially it certainly can be and I'm not trying to dissuade anyone obviously but I think that you know having a better understanding of the time and the resources and where you need to go with social media I think that is a, a much better way to approach the discipline of social media so somebody watching the show today who's struggling a little bit, instead of jumping in and feeling they got to jump in and, and oh, I'm not on Twitter and I got to be on here and, and here, they should start with figuring out where they want to go, what they want the results to be. What's the outcome from social media? because the outcomes that people get from social media are varied. Absolutely, very different, and it really depends on who you are as a business. For a lot of small businesses that haven't perhaps uh, jumped in yet, perhaps they have a website or they may have thought about a Facebook page, uh, they may even have you know signed up for a Twitter account, but they're not quite sure what to do. The difficulty really is because they haven't really defined what it is that they want to achieve first. And my recommendation is there's you know what I call a 10-point strategy, Really, the first step is really to do an audit or an inventory of what you have currently and really, really focus on what you have and then decide based on what you have in terms of that inventory, if you have a Facebook page or a website, does that website work for what you want? Does it drive enough traffic? Are you converting any people into customers? Um, you know, does the Facebook page have any engagement? Is it, you know, it's not just a matter of getting people to like the page. In fact, 98% of people on Facebook, once they've liked a page, don't return to that page. Your responsibility if you have a Facebook business page is really to provide content on that page so that that content is seen in somebody's stream, in that new stream of that person's profile who originally liked your page. So right. there, there are a number of things that one has to do before you can really decide what the next step is. So defining what your goal is, for example, if you wanted to say, um, 
have a certain amount of engagement on Facebook. I want to have this number of um, followers and this number of comments. That's a goal. That's a goal, but it's actually not a necessarily a, a good measurable goal. The measurable goal might be I want to have this number of comments within a certain period of time. So by really defining where you are, where you want to go, and then defining the strategy of how you're going to get there and the tactics of how you're going to get there, that really helps to provide a roadmap for specifically, especially especially for small business and even for a large business. So people can really begin to chunk it down, to, to really divvy it up into, into tasks, into, into manageable goals, into manageable pieces. And let's talk a, a, a little bit, because you said something that's really important for everybody to understand. 98% of the people that like your page come there, click the like button, but they're not coming back to see what Bob's Grocery is up to every day, are they? No. But Bob and his grocery store if they're posting interesting comment, that then appears in my stream, on my wall, and in yours. And so that's the point of engagement, because Bob is already connected with me. Absolutely. But now, let's talk a little bit about the way that, that people really grow their networks, which is in the news streams, in the feeds, and, and engaging their friends, friends of friends. Right, absolutely. And I think I think for a lot of people you know, who are still struggling with the concept of social media may not necessarily understand the power of sharing. So, and this is what is getting marketers, you know, small and large, small businesses and large businesses, so excited. Because, you know, if you think of it's what I call MLM, it's really about uh, multi-level marketing using the power of social media. And this is, you know, what it means is that when you have a piece of content that somebody else likes, that person then will share that content, hopefully, right. to all of the people who like or follow them, and so on and so forth. And so it creates this pyramid effect. And ultimately, what you're doing is you're leveraging the power of sharing so that social media really acts as your marketing arm or your your sales tool, really. And it, that part of it is certainly free. The resources required to build the content obviously aren't, aren't free, but the resources required to do that multi-level marketing on your behalf, that is free. And that is something that is extremely powerful. And you, you hit the nail on the head when you talked about content, because content is really you know, the core pillar of what social media is all about. If you don't provide quality content, authentic content, um, content that people will find interesting and engaging, very quickly people will not follow you and not find your, your information interesting, and they won't share it. So you're losing that opportunity. So building content in an area in which you're an expert is fantastic. If you, you know, if you're an organic gardener, for example, you could be talking about organic gardening. You could write recipes about organic, um, you know, food and so on. You can you can build a real niche, and that specifically is also really good for search engine optimization, which allows Google to find your information and and rank that in terms of searches. So there's a lot of ways that you can really build your your level of expertise and your, your information so that people will really share it. And that is really what good content is about and about and really about the opportunity for people to to find that information engaging and entertaining. I think you know one of the main things about social media is really for for people to find the information that they seek and that they they see entertaining. I think if you don't have an entertaining information, you know you can you can write very dry information for a long period of time. And even if it's really interesting to that specific specific niche, if it's not entertaining enough, it still won't get shared. So entertainment is really something that today, specifically for social media, is very, very important as well. So the idea uh, of, of really good, compelling content, it's not broadcast. In other words, it should not be a, a, for a business owner. It can't be a choir of me, 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 me. But, uh, but you make a great point. If you're uh, in the business of selling organic produce, mm -hmm. you're, you're an organic farm, uh, or you're a chef that specializes in organic cooking, you you would be providing content around that area. So you're looking at, at what you do, you're the expert in, but then you're, you're building out a little bit around that. So if, if, if I like this, it stands to reason that my uh, connections in the world of social media will also like a recipe or how to compost or you know how to conserve water. 
And, th and that's really important, isn't it, for, for businesses especially? Absolutely, absolutely. And so, you know, one of the things you could do is, let's say you had a website, which perhaps doesn't yet have a blog, then one of the things you can do is add a blog to your website, which really promotes you as an expert, but you can also ask guest bloggers to participate on your blog as well. Perhaps it might be a local winery, we're in wine country, so it might be a local winery that um, you know recommends wine pairings for the recipes that you've you've put together in terms of organic um, food. So you know, you think a little bit outside the box. You know, partner with other people and really share information when you're when you're sharing and linking and and partnering and having a conversation, engaging in conversations. People find that much more interesting and are much more likely to share that information. And again, you get that opportunity to market, not only to your target market, but to the target markets of the people that you partner with. And you're really building up other people. And you know, social media really does have that social component. You really need to understand that you are very much dealing with other people. This isn't you know, what we used to call interruption marketing. Right. It really is about, you know, engaging with people and really bringing people in and learning about what they're doing. It's a very different way of doing business from the, from the way that we used to do business. How, how comfortable should people be about maybe exposing more than they think they might? A little behind the scenes look is okay, not recommended. How do you feel about how intimate people should be with their uh, with their followers. Yeah, I think people should be really authentic. I think if and and I think they should be true to themselves as well. You know, that question comes to me a lot. Is you know how much should I really share? And one of the biggest challenges I think in social media is that you're really letting letting go to some extent. You right. know, you're taking a risk. You are certainly exposing your brand where perhaps in the past, especially for larger companies that had a very controlled uh, uh, experience around their brand. Um, you know, for smaller businesses, actually, I think it's a lot easier because we're, you know, as a small business, people used to come in the door or, you know, you have those one-to-one -one relationships and you have that personal, um, you know, relationship with your client or your customers. So it's actually, I think, a little bit easier for a small business to to really you know, embrace the social aspect of social media. I think for large businesses where you have a very controlled brand, I mean, there are lots and lots of examples where you know, these, these kinds of things have, have blown up in, 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 you know, in an uncontrolled way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Domino's Pizza is an example. United Airlines is another example. Um, you know, all kinds of ways that uh, businesses have struggled around the challenges of letting go. But, um, you know, I think, I think that... For, for a lot of businesses, if they can really concentrate on really being authentic and really understanding who they are and being true to their own voice, I think that will carry them a long way. And having certainly contingency plans and mitigation plans in place if things start to go in a way that you didn't plan for. So, you know, making sure that you have some sort of uh, plan in place that if the conversation starts to go in a direction that you didn't expect or don't want, then making sure that you have some kind of, you know, way that you can step into that conversation and direct it. That's a very important component of social media. Right. Because this is real and authentic, not everybody is going to be happy in the conversation. People make mistakes. And so you can't really undo a mistake, but you can have the opportunity to redo what happened or at least address it and deal with it. I think we've seen enough times that nothing is the wrong answer. I mean, right. if something goes sideways, silence is is the disastrous yeah. answer. Yeah, there's a great example, actually, that's, can I talk about a company that's... Sure. <laughs> there's a great example today online. You can go and look. Um, you know, it's on Facebook, and it's Goldman Sachs has a has a uh, Facebook page that is completely uncontrolled, and it it is rife with all kinds of opinions, very, you know, some not so good, some, a few that are good, most of them are not very good, right. about a very large company. Now, perhaps they don't care about their Facebook page, profile. But, you know, in my opinion, if you have a presence on, you know, if you don't have a presence, then you're not part, you don't have, you're not even engaging in that opportunity. Right. If you have a presence and it's uncontrolled, like the one with Goldman Sachs, you are, you know, that is a place where a community has formed and, you know, there are opinions being created and, and conversations happening and you don't even, you're not even participating. You don't even, you're, you're, it's a completely missed opportunity to actually change people's minds. Not only is there, you know, are there 
questions on that Facebook page about Goldman Sachs, you know, and their their company. But there are other questions, you know, about uh, how do I become an intern for Goldman Sachs? There, there are many lost opportunities. Right. So if you don't engage, whether you're a small business or a large business, Coca-Cola is another great example. When Coca-Cola first started... Um, on Facebook, it was actually started by two guys out of LA. Right. And you know, Coca-Cola eventually noticed the the site. Facebook actually contacted them and told them about the site. They had you know thousands of followers already. And rather than you know dumping those followers and and letting go of these two really you know fans of of Coca-Cola, they engaged with them and actually brought them on board and and brought them into the fold of their marketing strategy. That is a much more sensible way to go. Those conversations are going to happen around your brand whether you like it or not. And so you need to participate and you need to make sure that you are, you know, engaging with that community and with those conversations. Otherwise, it's a, again, it's a lost opportunity. Right. So there's essentially a fire going on on the Goldman Sachs Facebook page, completely un, we use the word controlled, but also moderated or engaged in. If somebody was there actually answering some of this stuff would cool what was going down. And it's, it's just a shame. It's like they opened the doors uh, and, and then never came back. I don't know if they even opened the doors. They ah. may not have been the ones to, to actually establish a Facebook page. And that's another part of this, is that it's really important, for, it's particularly for small businesses, to, you know, even if you're not, if you don't have the resources, and the reason I say small businesses is because very often the lar larger companies do have the resources to at least start something or have some sort of control or participate in, in more, um, you know, more effort than a small business. Mm -hmm. But what I recommend for small businesses is, is even if you don't have the resources to participate in every social channel, at least register an account within the, the top channels, you know, YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, register your name, your claim business your, name. Your space. Exactly. Right. It's just like in the old days with a website. If you don't, you know, in the, those days, it was at the domain name. If your domain name wasn't registered, somebody would squat, you know, and actually grab your domain name. Right. Today, that's happening all over the place for, for all of these social networks. And there's, there's so many, you probably don't want to do, you know, you don't, you, you can't possibly do all of them. There are hundreds, if not thousands today. Right. So, but at least certainly try and claim your stake for the most you know, the primary the social ones. networks, right. exactly. So if you were going to do, if a business was going to do, had only the resources to do the one, one thing, two things, Facebook. Well, it depends on the business. Okay. It really depends on the business because if you are a financial services business, for example, if you're a small bank, you know, I would recommend that you, well, certainly there are a lot of constraints around, um, you know, financial services and, and um, you know, there are a lot of regulations around what you can publish. So it really depends on, on the business. Mm. I think if you are, if you look at the kind of content that you have, if you see that, you know, Facebook is really uh, a network that people, you know, th th there have been some studies done on the science of Facebook and the kinds of businesses that really do well on Facebook. The kinds of businesses that do well are small businesses that, you know, certainly large businesses as well, but retail does really well, entertainment does really well, movies, music, food, photography, things that really affect people in their daily lives, I think. Games, certainly, obviously, with Zynga. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but... So if you know if you're a if you're a banker or a realtor, you have to really think about your strategy on Facebook. It's a different kind of approach, a little bit, because you're providing information in a different way. It's not quite as you know it's not quite as social or entertaining as some, possibly some of this other material, and not as easily shared. Um, so you have to think about it in a little bit more imaginative way. Mm. So uh, you know my, my my recommendation would be always you know if you have a website, certainly make sure that that website is up to date and current establish a blog as part of that uh, you know that effort but also look at Facebook perhaps if you are you know if you're a um, you know let's go back to our organic farmer for example supposing you, you know you were creating recipes you could do videos and have a YouTube channel those videos could be shared on Facebook yes that makes sense to have Facebook and a YouTube channel, perhaps less on Twitter. You know, though Twitter can be integrated, so integration is another big component. Right. Integration and syndication really is, you know, some of the things that need to be thought of when you're building that social media um, strategy. 
So when I talk about integration, I talk about what I mean by that is, uh, you know, when you publish on one social network, it automatically shows up elsewhere. And syndication is about, let's say, um, uh, something similar, but it's really about publishing in one place and having your content show up in a number of different places. On autopilot. On autopilot. That you've exactly, set up. exactly. Right. So, you know, there are there are a lot of tools that are that are available where you can do that. Um, Seismic is one, Hootsuite mm -hmm. is another. There are a lot of different uh, tools available. So, you know, what I was talking about was really for for a small business to decide which social network that they need to be on. Again, defining those goals and strategy right. and, and you know, implementing that strategy really depends on the time and the resources that you have available. So it, Facebook, the reason that I'm hesitant is because it takes effort to build that content over time. There's no point in establishing a strategy on Facebook and you post once a week no. because your post isn't going to be seen. Remember that, you know, what we talked about earlier is that that post, while it's on your page, hardly anybody's going to come back to that page. So the likelihood of that post being seen in somebody's stream, in somebody's news stream or that feed on their wall is so slim, it's it's practically pointless. So you have to make sure that you've made a commitment, if you're going to be on Facebook, to post regularly, several times a day, perhaps, if, if you're a business. So as a rule of thumb, a business should not be afraid to post two, three, five times, no, if, if they have something. Absolutely. If somebody is going to not be interested, first of all, that content has to be interesting. Right. We talked about that. We're starting there. And if it's, if it's, you know, if it's, if it's so annoying to somebody, they can turn it off, they can hide you, they can, you know, unlike you even eventually. The likelihood of that happening is so, again, very slim because, you know, your posts are one of hundreds of other posts. You know, the average number of friends that somebody has today, I think, is around 160, 180 right. friends. That number is only going to rise as, as social networks become more popular. Sure. So when we talk about news feeds, that information's moving. That information's moving. Not only is it moving, but there's something else called edge rank. And edge rank really defines the information that somebody sees. And edge rank for Facebook is about the engagement level that one has with somebody else. So let's say you and I were friends on Facebook, which we are. Which we are. Right? And so, you know, if we engage regularly, I'm much more likely to see your posts come to the top of my feed right. based on some algorithms that Facebook has determined as our level of engagement. So in other words, I'm more likely to be interested in content that you provide versus content that somebody else provides. And so... Facebook has determined that, you know, of the of all the content that's being posted by all the friends that I'm connected with and all the business pages that I'm that I've liked, the content that I actually see is filtered. And that's a really important concept for businesses to recognize that if they don't provide content sufficiently so that their audience engages with that content, their content isn't even going to be seen because Facebook does this automatic filtering. Right. So the algorithms are based on who interacts with you and who you interact with. So in the, in the, in the, I wish we had more time. In the few remaining minutes that we have, we've talked a lot about how to really maximize Facebook. Is there anything that pops into your mind? If you were, if you were to look at, at, a, at a, a business owner and say, A, this is going to be okay, if you engage and be regular, are there are a couple of tips that, that would make their lives easier or, or a couple of must-dos. I think one of them certainly is you must post. You must post, o yeah. Opening up your room <laughs> and then going away is not good. I have actually seen national ad campaigns like us on Facebook, and I go, and they haven't been on their own page, but they're spending money on national ad campaigns. So clearly somebody doesn't get it. But for the people that want to get it, must be present to win, right? Yeah. Oh gosh, yes. I can. Th I can think of probably four or five things that are absolute musts. One is post regularly and engage. Engaging content is absolutely number one. Uh -huh. So posting regularly, engaging content. Number two is your profile. You know, so we're talking about timeline. You mentioned timeline earlier. So one of the things about Facebook, obviously, is it changes all the time. And, and this is a question that comes up all the time as well, and I just want to address it really quickly. Should I only be on Facebook and not on, you know, not have bother to have a website? Oh. You know, and absolutely not, because right. Facebook changes all the time. And, you know, I've written posts on Social Biz about this, Social Biz Now. And it, it's so important that 
you know, to understand you don't own what you have posted on Facebook. Anything that you post up there is not your content. Yes, you can download it and you should go into your help, you know, go, go into the settings and download your content to make sure that you have a, a copy right. on a regular basis, especially if you're a business. Um, but it's really important to recognize that your website is really where you can build your brand and, you know, create that presence and control, you know, the content. On Facebook, you have a lot less control, certainly over the the structure and the layout, everybody's sites look the same. Right. You know, but um, you know, the main thing is also that content doesn't belong to you any longer, and that's really important for you to recognize. So, and of course, the change. Right. So, with with timeline itself, um, you know, the this blend is happening between a, a personal profile and a business profile on Facebook. Facebook is really moving towards really embracing business as part of its overall strategy. And so I think that, that that's really going to change how things are done. So I, you know, again, looking at your, you know, if you're a business page, look at, you know, if it's timeline, timeline isn't going to be, you know, rolled out for businesses for a while yet, but, um, you know, look at how that's going to impact you and what, how you can leverage timeline. There are a number of things that will allow, you know, a business to really engage in a much stronger way with their, with their clients and customers using timeline. Great. So we've talked a lot about how to create great content, how to really maximize Facebook, because you are the expert from your Facebook in 14 Days book, available on Amazon. And uh, But really, we come back to the idea that that is part of your social media strategy, the Facebook, the YouTube, the Twitter. But you are really got to pay attention to your website and your blog, because that's what belongs to you. I would say, and pay attention to your customers. And pay attention think, to your yeah, customers. I think all of this is really about learning about your customers, and that's what the excitement about social media is really ultimately all about for small businesses and large businesses, because the opportunity is there now today to really learn so much more about the customer than we ever had the, you know, had an opportunity before. Social media, not just for selling, mostly for customer service. Ruhi Mula, thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate thank your you, time, and I appreciate your time. Thanks for tuning in. This has been Social Jumpstart, the cable television program about social media. I'm Mike Walpert, and we'll see you next time.